YouTube. When Niles and Maid of Honor Sarah meet at a wedding at, you guessed it, Palm Springs, they get caught in one of those infinite time loop situations that you might have heard about. I first learned about this movie back in March when I watched Let Me Explain Sundance Festival video. The big thing about Palm Springs is that it's now the highest grossing film at Sundance and it beat the previous movie by only 69 cents. The main reason why I wanted to see it was because Kristen Milioti, Milioti, I don't know, she was in it and you know, she's the mother in How I Met Your Mother and I love that show. And then I got really excited when I found out it was coming to Hulu because before everything changed when the coronavirus attacked, I figured Palm Springs was going to get a limited release in theaters, but I'm really glad I'm able to watch it on Hulu now because I bet if it was released theatrically, it just would have been pushed back like all the other movies I want to see. I mean, the time loop thing kind of fits with quarantine because every day feels the same and they all just mesh together. <laughs> this is mainly a comedy and I think a little bit of sci-fi? Question mark? Question mark? There's this cave that's causing a bunch of anomalies, including the time loop, and it kind of looks like the heart of the island from Lost. It's never really explained, it's just, it just exists, but I mean, it is mainly a comedy, so they want to focus more on the characters anyway, which I guess I'm cool with. Yeah, this movie was really good. <laughs> and if you couldn't tell by the title, it's probably the comedy of the year, but considering the plethora of movies that have been out this year, probably not saying much. <laughs> Initially, what I like about this movie is that when we meet Niles, he has been in this time loop for such a long time. We don't know how long, but if he doesn't remember the job he had before he got caught in the time loop, it's probably... My favorite things about this movie is Niles and Sarah's chemistry. It was so great. I think that's mainly because Kristen Milioti Milioti, whatever, has great chemistry with the actors that she works with. There's this one scene in the climax, which I won't spoil, where Niles tries to persuade Sarah from not doing something, and she says, okay, I'll give you one sentence. And he says this entire run-on sentence as a loophole. He says dot 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 and Sarah has to tell him that it's called an ellipses. And the other things I loved about this movie are the color grading and cinematography. Wow. <laughs> there were just some really cool angles that they got in there. The wedding reception looked absolutely astonishing. Even though Palm Springs is, you know, a desert, the pool scenes and the pool floats were so vibrant and lively. It just looked like I could jump through the screen and dive down into the pool. Speaking of which, when Niles or Sarah or whoever's in the pool just reminds me that I could be doing that right now if it wasn't for Miss Rona and my complex pool had enough money to open up. I was so amazed by how well Andy Samberg and Kristen work together in this movie. They have this entire choreographed dance routine in this biker bar because they can. And I'll just say it right now, if the music they were dancing to was non-diegetic, that scene is now a million times funnier. And I have to give a shout out to J.K. Simmons. So the rules of the glowing lost cave is that when someone walks into it, that means they're now caught in the time loop. And because of Niles, that means this other guy, Roy, is stuck in the time loop along with Niles and Sarah. And Roy is a total psychopath. He's really angry at Roy for making him stuck in the time loop, so he kills him whenever he gets the chance. We get some brief shots of the ways he tortured him, and let's just say it was weird to see my favorite six-fingered great uncle like that. I mean, Roy shot Niles, and I think Niles jumped into the pool, and apparently it was filled with lighter fluid, I think, because Roy threw his cigar in there, and ugh. And then Roy kind of gets an arc during the third act. I'm more familiar with his voiceover rules. That's not the position I hired you for. So it was really surprising to see him like this. <laughs> yeah, and it took me an hour to realize that the British cokehead in this snazzy suit is Colin Koo from Crazy Rich Asians. I don't know where Araminta is and why Colin is in Palm Springs and not Singapore, but... <laughs> The scenes where Sarah and Niles grew up the lives of different people at the wedding reception. They prank and mess around with different people. During one day, they put a bomb in the wedding cake, and Niles has to interrupt, I think, one of the wedding toasts to announce there's a bomb in the wedding cake, and he destroys the cake by pulling it out and shooting it with a crossbow before it explodes. And then Sarah gets in the act, and I think she's this French pirate who put the, <laughs> the bomb in the cake, and it was so great. It was iconic. And at the beginning of the movie, before I think Niles is established in a time loop, he sees Sarah across the room 
you know, in those big epic romantic movies, that cliche that I honestly love. She's sitting down at a table and the Niles walks up to her, like cutting the dance floor. Since he's been in the time loop for so long, he knows what everyone is going to do, so he matches up to different people perfectly. I, I, I can't describe it, but like, it's amazing. I don't know how many takes that took, but I'm just giving props to Andy Samberg. I also love the world building and just general rules of this time loop. No matter where you go, no matter how you die, you will always be in the time loop. You will always wake up at the same place where you were before the time loop began. I love the way Sarah tries to figure out how to get out of the time loop. I can't even count them on my fingers. There were probably even more off screen. Since she lives in Texas, she actually drives from Palm Springs to Texas without falling asleep because she believes that if she went to sleep at her own house, she wouldn't wake up back in Palm Springs, but that fails. At one point, she actually starts learning quantum theory. I mean, if you're stuck in a time loop, there's nothing else to do. And then she commits sewer slide a bunch of times to see if that works, but it never does. And what I kind of like is that even when you die, the pain will always be awful. I believe at one point Niles tried to commit sewer slide and he was in the ICU for like two days. I know the time loop subgenre is very overused, you know, like Groundhog Day, and I haven't seen Groundhog Day, so I can't totally compare. Even though I haven't seen Groundhog Day, or honestly many other time loop movies, Palm Springs still felt really refreshing. It feels so unique with the location and the characters and the world building rules of the glowing lost cave. I thought this movie was great, now I really want to go to Palm Springs. But obviously I can't because of Miss Rona. Just wear a mask and social distance, people. I already miss Disneyland. Don't make it harder than it already is. This was the absolute perfect movie to watch during the summer. And I'm so thankful Hulu was able to distribute it. I wouldn't want to wait until like next year to watch this. Seriously, can we please appreciate Kristen Milioti? Milioti? She looked absolutely gorgeous in this movie. I mean, she always looks gorgeous. Have you seen her in How I Met Your Mother? I don't really have any flaws with this movie per se. It's just, there's sure a lot of people doing the devil's tango. I'm 17 years old and I still feel uncomfortable during devil tango scenes. Sue me. Overall, this was a really solid movie. I really enjoyed watching it. Definitely is one of my favorite movies of the year. I'm so glad it's giving the hype it deserves. Also, can we talk about its posters? Along with Wonder Woman 1984 and probably Birds of Prey, these are some of my favorite movie posters of the year. On the rainbow scale, this is a light blue movie. It was really funny. All the actors did an amazing job performing, including Kristen Milioti, Milioti, Andy Samberg and J.K. Simmons. They're really all amazing. The color palette was gorgeous. The cinematography was amazing. I mean, I really want to frame some of these shots. And even though its concept kind of hits too close to home during this time, it was still an amazing watch. I just really enjoyed watching this movie. I would love to see Kristen in more movies, and I wish her the best for her career. She is absolutely iconic. I mean, I knew that from the start of season 9 of How I Met Your Mother, so I think your best bet is just to suffer existence in quarantine and check out this movie on Hulu, because today, tomorrow, yesterday, it's all the same. But yeah, check out Palm Springs on Hulu, comment, like, subscribe for future movie reviews, and I'll see you later.